that live up. You got it. We're now live streaming on YouTube. Waiting for that to load up. All right, there we go with that. Drop that down. Go over here. Pull it up over here on my main channel. Put up there. All right, there we are. All right. <clears throat> I want to welcome my YouTube people who are, who, who are just now signing in. YouTube people are just signing in. Thank you all for signing in to us. Let's go ahead and um, get started with our recording. And we'll go ahead and, 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 and kick this off and try to get this done and not be here too long tonight. But uh, we're going to be here long enough to get this done. I'm going to start my recording. All right. Good evening, everybody. This is Calvin Butler with the RBBS Logistics Learning Centers and the National Dispatchers Network. And tonight is Thursday night. The time now is 7.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it is time for How to Dispatch series, our series on how to become a how to dispatch and the steps that we give all seven steps on the dispatch series. Tonight, we're on step number six, which is going to be rate confirmations and BOLs, Bill of Ladies. So look, these things are very important, rate confirmations and, and, and BOLs, okay? Now, I want y'all to understand something. The reason why this is, why rate confirmations are so, so, so important. So, I'm, I'm being dead serious here. Don't get a rate confirmation and just glaze over it. Don't do that. Make sure you read and understand every aspect of that rate confirmation. I mean, read everything for several reasons. Reason number one is if a broker is going to screw you over, it's going to be on the rate con. Okay? That's where it's going to happen. Because you all can say stuff in the phone conversation. We look the load up on the load board. Conversations are all pleasant until you pay this much money. It's a one drop and all this other stuff. Then you get the rate confirmation. You don't read it. And it turns out you may find out it may be a two or three drop load. A two pickup, you know, two drops, two pickups, one drop, or whatever. Case. That changes the whole dynamic of the situation. Because now your driver's got to pick up, got to make two stops, which takes more time, less time to deliver the load. More load time, more unload time. All this stuff goes into play. And if, and, if, and if you don't catch that on the Raycon, you could wind up getting taken for a ride, okay? You may look at the Raycon and uh, and the money's not the same. The money's the same. You also want to check to see if the destination is the same because they may put a destination on there that may be farther in miles which the money looks like it's the same, but because it's farther than miles, you're not getting paid as much. Why? Because the rate per mile is what really matters. So check all this stuff when you're dealing with the rate con. We're going to go over a rate con completely, and we're going to discuss all the important factors within a rate con. Also, within a rate con, you have instructions, specific instructions that your carrier needs to um, needs to abide by in order to get in and out of the shipper in a timely fashion okay because because if, if if there are some instructions that that shipper that that carrier does not follow there are certain specific instructions like call when you're so many miles out or so many you know hours away or you know you have a call to check in if you don't call and check in they may not accept him okay you may get there where you didn't call so we didn't we didn't confirm you so therefore you gotta wait so he's sitting outside there waiting to get in because he didn't call to confirm his coming in at the time that they told him to call. Or he didn't call the right place to get that confirmation. There are there are there are a hundred different things that could that could that could be on that rate con that if you don't read it, that could cause you to either not get paid on the load, the carry not get paid on the load, the carry get paid less money on the load, the carry gets gets fined a fee on the load, or something of that nature. Okay. So make sure when you're going over those rate cons, make sure that you are reading, first of all, the entire rate con. 
and make sure you understand it. And if there's a discrepancy or something that's wrong, that's not what you all discussed, you need to call that broker back and have them to clarify it and make sure it's put on that Raycon and make the adjustments, okay? Other stuff that's, that's going to be on a Raycon, you need to have a, like, maybe need, need to have a discussion, you know, about the, the detention pay and also about lumper fees, okay? So, but we're going to go over all that tonight because Raycons are very important. They're, 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 they're one, of the, one of the most important parts of the whole process. Now, this is the this is this is the step that is directly before invoicing and getting paid. So you're getting close to getting paid. You have you know found your carrier. You contract with the carrier. Him with the pitch. They sign your dispatch agreement. You contract the carrier. They filled out the dispatch agreement. They filled out the um the carrier profile form. You've gotten all that back. You've gone to the low boards. You have evaluated the low boards and found them some good paying freight. You contacted the broker. And you let the broker know that you're carrying interest in a certain load. Uh, you know, now that broker is now sending you the rate con so you can go ahead and dispatch your carrier. Because without that rate con, you really can't send your carrier out to pick up a load until that rate con has been executed. Okay. So this is where we are right now. We're on the rate con. You've done all the other stuff, all the fun stuff. Now it's time to get to the nitty gritty stuff to, so you can get paid. Okay. And the rate con and the BOL is part of that nitty gritty. All right, let's go ahead and uh, start sharing my screen. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Let's go ahead and start sharing my screen so we can get on this. All right, as always, we are in our back office. Uh, this is where we go to access a lot of our stuff. But if you want a um, copy of a Raycon, I can um, put the link in here. Well, I can't really put a link in because these are these are PDFs. I'm going to see if I can send you all a file so you all can have a copy of, a, you know, of my sample of what, what these are real Raycons. These are not, not samples. These are Raycons um, that I pulled up. But you can always go ahead and pull up um, some loads that I have. Pull up some of my old loads. As you can see here, I'm looking at one here for this is an invoice that I prepared. And 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 when we get into invoice, and I'll show y'all uh, uh, what you need to attach um, to every invoice. Um, with every invoice, you need to attach you know, the Raycon, the BOL, and the dispatch agreement, sign dispatch agreement on every invoice. I can see here, here a bunch of invoices that I've, you know, um, done over the, over the years. I've dispatched a lot of freight, as you all can see. I've dispatched a lot of freight. So these are all invoices to trucking companies that have um, pretty much, you know, um, gotten those through me um, over the years. So we're going to look at some of those at, at, at a couple of those Raycons to show you all what's going on. All right, first of all, we're going to pull up this Raycon right here. This is the Raycon I want to look at. That's a bill of laden. Let's go with this one. I think this is a bill of laden too. No slow confirmation. All right. Here's a Raycon. And I think this is also a Raycon. All right. We get all right. We're gonna go over these two rate, these two Raycons, because every rate confirmation can be different. You know, it depends on how they want to set them up, but every rate confirmation can be different. Um, so you have to pretty much go by, you know. Take them, you know, um, as their ears when they come in, and you have to evaluate them on their own merits. All right, let me go ahead and blow the screen up, and you all can see this, right? You all can see my screen, right? Everybody can yeah. see my screen. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. All, right. all right. This is a standard, you know, rate confirmation. This is actually a pretty good one. Um, the way it's, it's typed up and everything. A lot of times you get Raycons that are handwritten. Okay, they're gonna look kind of messy. This is actually one that's pretty good. I like getting them like this because they're typed up. You know, they're, they're filled out properly. You know, and they're really typed up. Now, one of the things you're gonna look for in your Raycon, um, you're gonna make sure that all the information on who your broker is or or and who the the um where you're picking the load up at and stuff like that. Make sure that is correct. Okay. Your standard Raycon is going to read something just like this. You're going to have what's called a a um, 
a load number or a pro number. Load numbers and pro numbers, they're basically the same thing, okay? Some people will say load number, some people will say pro number, okay? But you're going to check for the pro number, which is up here, okay? There's a rate confirmation. This is titled, the rate confirmation is dated, has a timestamp on it, has the name of the company that you're um, getting it from, which is Freight Logistics Incorporated. It has their, their address in Milford, Oregon, okay? It's going to have the um, who is from, okay? Michael Jr. McAdoo and his number, his fax number, and his email address is going to have the carrier information, the carrier that is running that load, J. Panay Company, their phone number, you know, attention carrier, their MC number, their DOT number, driver, and the cell phone number. Now, this is a pretty good rate con because it has the driver's information, which you, which you want to know who, you, who the driver is, okay? You want to know who the driver is. In case it's kind of a large company, you want to know who the driver is. Is and you want to you're gonna want to have their cell phone number because you're gonna need to be talking to that driver, the person who is actually transporting that load. It's gonna have the size, which is this is a flatbed or step deck. Okay, um, one boom is sixteen hundred and twenty miles. Um, and how many pieces? You know, thousand pieces. Line haul rate is seventeen hundred bucks. Total rate seventeen hundred bucks. Okay, check to make sure the money is right. Okay. Check to make sure the money is right. And then you've got the um the first pickup, which is right here. You got your pickup and you got your you got your drop, which is put as a stop. And it's only got one stop, one drop, one pickup, one drop. You want to check that. You want to make sure it's not two pickups and one drop or three pickups, one drop, or something like that. You know, if that's not discussed, you want to make sure it's on there. So you're going to check this on the pickup and the drop, the company, or where you're picking it up from, the address in Georgetown, Texas, the phone number. You've got the appointment date, the date that it's be picked up. you got the seal number, okay? Does everybody know what a seal is? Does everybody know what it is? I want to find the seal number if it's not on the Raycon. Everybody know where to find the seal number. The seal number is, which, is what's going to be on that lock on the load when they tag the load. Like if you're in a drive in and they put a lock on it, they put like a little um, steel band on it. It's got a lock on it and it has a seal number on it. That means it's been sealed. That's your seal number. Same thing with flatbed, thing like that. You know, they're going to put a little tag on it and that's going to be your seal number. Okay. There's a seal number right there. Okay. The place where it's being delivered to. Okay. Which is Stevenson's e Equipment in Park, Pennsylvania. Prospect Park, Pennsylvania. Okay, there's a there's a contact phone number. Again, make check, make sure the seal number is still the same. Make sure you have the you know the seal number on pickup, seal number on drop off should be the same. Okay, all right. Now here are some instructions. These are your guidelines, and make sure you read this stuff. Now we're gonna go over two Raycon because Raycons there they have each one is gonna be different. Okay, as far as what the instructions is, how they how they have them filled out, but just make sure you go over them completely and make sure you understand everything on those Raycons. Because if you don't, this is where they're going to screw you at on the Raycons. Okay, it says here by signing this agreement, the carrier agrees to the following. Make sure that you read this and make sure that the driver of that truck reads this and make sure that they understand. So get confirmation from your carrier that they have read this. In some cases, I have been known to call the carrier up and get them on the phone, and I read it to them to make sure that I know that they got it. Because we will read it, I will read it out loud to them so that it make sure that, that they understand their instruction. And, of course, you're going to send them a copy. of You can either text them a copy, email them a copy, or whatever the case may be. But you're going to send them a copy of, of this as well. By signing this agreement, the carrier agrees to the following. Carriers certifies they are authorized to transport freight by the FMCSA Federal Motors Carrier Safety Administration. And at the time of shipment, they do not have a rating of unsatisfactory. Area certifies they will not rebroker, assign, or interline the shipment without written consent 
from FLI. Now, what do they mean by rebroker, assign, or interline? Can anybody tell me what they mean by that? Can anybody tell me what they think that um, was meant by that? Double brokering? Somewhat, yeah. Um, Rebrokering or assigning by a carrier, it can be done but it has to be with the permission of the original broker. So in other words, a carrier will sign this rate con and says that they are running it, but then they will then contract another carrier that's not really associated with their company to run the load. You understand what I'm saying? Because he, the broker doesn't know anything about that, that, you know, that other carrier that you may be getting to run the load. In other words, the the carrier that they are aware that they have been notified is going to run that load, that has to be the carrier that runs that load. It cannot be reassigned or 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 co-brokered off to another carrier. Okay? So everybody understands what they mean by that broker assign or interline the shipment without written consent of FLI. Doing so, now they tell you what the consequence of that is. This is why it's very important to read this stuff. Doing so would forfeit the right to collect freight charges and permit FLI to pay such charges directly to the underlying carrier. So if you don't work out a deal with a carrier, you say, okay, I don't, I don't really want to run this load, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass it off to you but you're going to pay me 20% just for passing off to you, or whatever the case may be. Or I'm going to pay you, you know, this amount of money, and I'm going to keep this amount of money. Guess what? If they find out you did that, they're not going to pay you at all. They could just pay all the money to the carrier that actually ran that load. They could. They can also not pay them either because they they broke the rules too. You understand what I'm saying? So is that their discretion of who they want to pay and not pay anybody else? And, and as you can see, there are other penalties that could be – enforce on top of that okay all right doing so would forfeit the right to collect freight charges and permit fli to pay such charges directly to the underlying carrier carrier certifies its position of the required insurance for the truck involved in this shipment which includes but is not limited to Cargo liability in the amount of $100,000 and auto liability in the amount of $1 million and any applicable workers' compensation insurance as prescribed by the laws of your state. Both parties agree that FLI is the sole party responsible for payment of carrier's charges under no circumstances will carry a seat payment from shipper, consignee, or FLI's customer. Now, there have been instances where, where carriers find out who the actual ship, or they know the shipper because they're picking it up from the shipper. There have been instances of carriers trying to work a backhand deal with the shipper around the broker. Now, that is, you're not supposed to do that, okay? Neither you as a dispatcher or the carrier is supposed to go directly to that broker's customer and try to work a back end deal with them while you're on the load with that load. Now, if you happen to come across that shipper by some other means or through some other whatever on other freight or whatever, this that's fine. But you cannot, while you're under a load, while you're under a, rate confirmation while you're under an agreement of running a load, you cannot go and speak to that shipper about running extra loads outside of that broker. Does everybody understand that? Does everybody understand that? Yes, yes. Because I, I, I don't want you all to get in trouble and get your carrier in trouble. Some, some people may say, well, this is a good way to, 
to you know to get direct shippers. You know, once you find out where the load is being picked up at, then I can just call that shipper back and say, "Hey, you got any more freight that runs like that? You know, we'd be glad to run it. We work out some work out some directly with the shipper." No, you can't do that. Because one thing, you're not a broker. But another thing, you are contractually under a contract when you accepted this load. Okay, so you cannot be negotiating with that shipper for for other freight while you are while you are on the contract to deliver this load. Okay, let's make sure of that now. Um, don't try to you know, compile a direct shippers list by running load for brokers and then going back and using that, those shippers in your direct shippers list. Okay, that is um, you know <laughs> not the right way to, to do to do business to say the least. Now, and they have consequences for you if if you happen to do just that, okay? Um, limited insurance, payment for carriers, consignee, FYS customer. Okay, failure of FI, F, blah, blah, blah. All right, here we go. We're, we're right here. Charges under circumstance, limit party responsible for payment, carrier payment from shipper, consignee, or FIS customer. Failure to, failure of FI to collect payment. Hold on, I'm, I'm missing something. Let me go back up here where I started off at. In the amount of $100, liability, um, applicable workers' compensation insurance. They Both parties agree. FYI said, okay, here we go. Both parties agree that F, FLI is the sole party responsible for payment of carrier's charges. Under no circumstances will carrier seek payment from shipper, consignee, or FLI's customer. Failure of FLI to collect payment from its customers shall not exonerate FLI of its obligation to pay the carrier. So in other words, FLI has made a commitment to pay you even if they don't get paid by the shipper. Because more than likely, they have what's called uh, non-recourse factoring. Does everybody know what non-recourse factoring is? Put this way, this is there anybody who doesn't know what non-recourse factoring is? Where they'll pay you or they not will pay you. Well, non-recourse, yeah, well, non-recourse factoring says that you're going to get paid regardless. The carrier gets paid regardless. It also says that the broker gets paid regardless or, or the shipper pays not. Because with factoring, and this is why everybody uses factoring on Every broker I know has fact, okay? And I would say about 90% of brokers all use non-recourse fact, okay? Non-recourse fact is the fact that come and gets a higher percentage. They get about 5%. Recourse factoring usually charges about 25 to 3.25%. But non-recourse factoring charges 5% of the low fee, okay? But the advantage there is if for some reason they can't collect money from from the shipper, they don't come back to you and make you pay that money back. That's why it's called non-recourse. Okay, you're not going to get any of the chargebacks. Okay, um, well, I was about to explain something. Here. Um, non-recourse factory is the best way to go um, because you don't want to be charged back money because oh yeah, yeah, I know what I was about to say because you know the shipper legally the shipper can take up to 120 days to pay out on load. Y'all did know that, right? Y'all do know that shippers can take up to 120 days to pay out on loads, right? Y'all need y'all need to understand that. So if yes. you're ever doing a so if you're ever doing a load that is not factored, you could be on a long wait to get paid <laughs> because the shipper can take up to 120 days to pay out on a load. So and I always like to ask brokers: Is this load factored non recourse or is this recourse factored? You, are, you always kind of want to ask that because you don't want, you know, a broker coming back to your carrier and say, well, and this hurts more, this hurts brokers more than it hurts the carrier. Because once a broker has paid the carrier out, I mean, they're going to catch hell in high water trying to try to get money back from a carrier if the shipper don't pay. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> they're going to catch, you know, and, and there's nothing legally that they can do to make that carrier pay. Because they took the risk, okay? The broker took the risk. Now, this is for those of you who are brokers. 
if you take the risk of accepting a load from a shipper and your factory is non-recourse, that means that you take the risk of paying money out. And if that load don't get paid to the uh, paid by the shipper, then you just out that money that you paid to the carrier. Okay. That's why you always want to go with non-recourse factory. Okay, there's two types of factories. There's recourse and there's non-recourse. It's worth it to pay that extra 2% or that extra 3%. Trust me on that. If you do if you are a broker, okay, if you are a broker. Now, if you are a dispatcher, you don't need factory. I know a lot of dispatchers, well, I need I want to factor my loads on my carrier, but I want to make sure my carrier pays me. I I can I can show you all I'm gonna show you all on the invoicing side once we do the um next week. I'm gonna show you all how to get guaranteed, guaranteed to get paid each and every time. Guaranteed how to collect your money even from a even from a even from a um carrier that is, that has said I'm not gonna pay you or a carrier that's running from you. I'm gonna show you how to guarantee, guarantee to get your money 100 percent of the time, no questions asked. Okay? I'm gonna show you how to Exactly how to do that. Okay. Next week. All right. So make so make sure that you know it's non-recourse factory because this statement kind of covers that right there. Um for payment of carriers charges, FYI the parties over responsible for carrying repair charges. Um under no circumstances would carriers seek payment from shipper consignee, FLS customers, failure to failure, failure of FLI to collect payment from its customer shall not exonerate FLI of its obligation to pay the carrier. FLI agrees to pay carrier's invoice 10 days after receipt of the invoice and the clean bill of lading. Okay. Now, this is a pretty good rate card because they, they, they actually outline and tell you when to expect to be paid. Okay. A lot of BOLs don't tell you that. This is a very good, I'm sorry, a lot of rate cons don't tell you that. This is a very good rate con. It 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 specifically tells you, okay? FLI agrees to pay carrier's invoice 10 days after receipt of invoice and the clean bill of late. So you know when you you know when your carrier is gonna get paid. So if you know when your carrier is gonna get paid, you know when you can go ahead and do your invoice, right? And have the invoice date set to send to them on day what? Day 11, right? Because that's the day after they got paid, right? Right? So next week on invoicing, I'm going to show you all how to you can do that through Square. Now, if you use some other system like QuickBooks, PayPal, uh, Quickens, or whatever you use, but I'm gonna show you all how using Square, how I use it, and I can set my set my my invoices to be sent on a certain date. Specifically, when you're dealing with rate cons like this, you can go ahead and you can set your invoice date on the date that this be be email and text to your carrier. Okay. Uh, after receipt of clean bill, okay, and bill then all of the details pertaining to this shipment were listed above. And both parties have verbally agreed to the stated total payment. This amount, including all tarping, fuel surcharges, and any other fees related to this shipment, listed or not. Now, this is kind of a gray area here. Now, on something like this, I usually call them back. Okay? And ask them some some other question, right? Because there could be stuff that pops up that's outside of that rate con. Can anybody tell me what could pop up outside of the rate con? That might need to be discussed. Can anybody tell me what else could pop up? That you all might need to discuss outside of the Raycon. As a dispatcher, this is going to be your responsibility to bring this up with the broker. 
Nobody got any clue? All right. If a carry gets to a gets go, goes there to pick up a load and have a certain time to pick the load up, and it takes them longer than two hours to load that truck, what needs to be discussed if it takes longer than two hours to load that truck? Detention pay. Detention pay. Okay. That's not listed in here because here, 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 here is a broker that's basically that. They're telling you. That's why you have to read this. You have to you have to understand what you're reading. Because if you accept this and don't call them back to get any type of clarification, if it takes them too long to load that truck, they could say, "Well, we don't owe you any detention pay because the clause says right there." What does that clause say? It says that uh, all the details pertaining to this shipment were listed above. And both parties have verbally agreed to the stated total payment. This amount included all tarping, fuel surcharges, and any other fees related to the shipment, listed or not. Additional charges to the agreed rate for changes in shipment or accessory charges must be approved in writing by FLI. Deductions for time, sensitive, or service failures must be advised in advance by FLI and agreed to by carrier via signed rate confirmation or acceptance of the load. So basically, they're, they're basically telling you in legal terms, in legal in, in, in legal terminology, in, in legal language, that if you want to get paid for the for detention pay, it's got to be in this rate con. Like I always tell you, if it ain't in the rate con, it don't exist. Right? If it's not in the rate con, what happens? It does not exist, right? Right? It does not exist. If it's not in the rate con. Okay? So, so when you you read these rate cons, you get that type of thing. You want to call that, you want to call that broker back and say, hey, uh, I, 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 I'm looking at the rate con, and we never discussed, really, detention pay, um, um, lumper fees. Do y'all you know what lumper fees are? Can anybody tell me what lumper fees are? The fees, they have to pay the guys to unload the truck. Exactly. It's usually associated with refrigerated cargo. There's hardly ever lumper fees on flatbed because you use a flatbed, they come out with a you know crane, drop it on, or forklifts to drop it on, and then you know it's all done. Usually, lump fees are associated when 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 actual people have to go on and remove stuff, you know, box by box or or, or piece by piece or something like that. Usually, when you got more than two or three people who are doing that work, okay. But usually, if it's something that can be loaded up with a forklift, it's not gonna. Most likely, it's not gonna have lumber fees because you, you, know, you just pick it up, drop it on there, drop it on there, and then they're done. But usually, when you got physical manual labor of unloading the truck, and that happens a lot with refrigerated items, okay? Because yeah, that happens a lot with refrigerated items, okay? Um, because, uh, some refrigerated truck, you know, you can't go up in there with a forklift anyway, because it depends on how it's made the refrigeration and whatever this and that, you know, you could damage that trailer. So, you know, but lumper fees is another thing that could come up outside of the rate con. Okay. Detention pay, lumper fees. Okay. Lumper fees is supposed to be the responsibility of the broker. The broker is responsible for authorizing and paying lumper fees. Now, have I had carriers to pay lumper fees? Yes. I've seen some carriers that does pay lumber fees, but they get that money up front in the low fee, in the rate. Because they either been they used to going to a certain carrier, a certain place to pick up, and they know what the lumber fees are, and they, and they negotiate that, that within the rate. So then they just pay it out of the out of their own com data checks or EFS checks or whatever it may be. But most of the time, 95% of the time, brokers are responsible for paying lumber fees. Okay. And detention pay. Okay, so 
a good dispatch is going to discuss that before signing that rate confirmation. Everybody see how important the rate confirmation is? It's, see how important it is to read the rate confirmation? Now, down here, you're going to have your rate confirmation. Yes. All right. Now, now you're going to have your, your rate confirmation um, details. is going to be on next page. Make sure you're going to read that rate confirmation detail. You're going to have your rate confirmation, your pro number. You're going to make sure uh, I'm just right there. Make sure it's the same uh, pro number that's there. Make sure it's the same pro number that's up there. Make sure that the pro number is is, is all the same. Okay? You see you got the name of the company, um, where it's um, coming from, who the driver is, and, and the carrier, their, um, the Freight Logistics Incorporated, their, their address. Freight Logistics Incorporated pays all carriers 10 days after receipt. They are reiterating what they have said up here already. Okay? Freight Logistics Incorporated pays all carriers 10 days after receipt of the invoice and the signed clear bill of late. Now, now check calls can be easier than ever. Drivers, text your pro number, location, and status update straight to FLI text check calls to there. That's the number you text that to right there. You're going to have that sign send um, bills to this address above, pro number again, and then the e-sign stamp right there. This is a, this is a pretty good you know, um, rate confirmation. They have the e-sign stamp, you know, all that type of stuff. So everything is, you know, real good, up to date. It's not a handwritten one. There a lot of times when you would get a handwritten rate confirmation, and you have to really go over those because you want to make sure you're reading it right. And you, know how, you, know how, you know how people's handwriting can be. So you want to make sure you're reading it right and you're going over it correctly. Now, that's one rate con right there. Let me see if I can pull up another rate con. Here's another low confirmation. All right. This is a different one. And hold on. Let me escape that real quick. But let me, let me pull up the BOL. I got the BOL for this one too. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go over this rate confirmation and the BOL, all right? So this one, all right, here's one from DAC, D-A-K, not DAC, but D-A-K, out of Sarasota, Florida, um, a, load, a load that I had did um, for one of my um, carriers, whatever it would be. All right. All right. Now, same thing. Remember I told you sometimes they call the load number, sometimes they call the pro number, right? Y'all remember that, right? In, it, it, in this case, they're calling it a load number. Load number, pro number, it's the same thing. There's some people call it a pro number, some people call it a load number. All right? Does everybody understand that? So don't get confused when you see load number and you see pro number is on a different, on another rate confirmation, and they don't say, well, well where's the load number? All those is a pro number. No, they're the same thing. Load numbers and pro numbers are the same thing, okay? The date, equipment, flatbed step deck, equipment length, weight, 8,000 pounds. This is mile, 1,168 miles, okay? Make sure all that's in the carrier, I'm um, information. You got the broker, I'm um, information there. Uh, Florida, you got the carrier, I'm um, information, uh, BNT, LLC. You know, um, there's the information right there. MC number. Um, primary contact, Tony at dispatch, um, phone number, driver not set. They haven't set a driver yet, but when they do, they'll put the phone number there. Make sure you call them and get that driver's um, um, information. Notes and references. Okay. Dri now, now, this is one that has instructions for the driver. This is what I mean by go over the instruction with the driver so the driver knows certain things that they have to do. Because if they don't do these things, it could, they could be penalized. And you could not get paid. Okay? Notes. And you got, you got the three little stars there. Which means this is what? Important. All right? Driver must collect payment code from delivery contact person before offloading. Okay? References. This is the person... Um, Ignor ran computer air compressor on single axle trailer. Item number gives the item number right there. Okay, this is what they're you know, uh, what type of trailer it has and type of compressor and all that type of stuff. 
All right, date, the pickup. Where it's picked up at, the date it's picked up is on 110 2018. Location, Major General Hugh B. Moat Terrence, uh, uh, Moat Tennessee National Guard Headquarters. This was a military load. National Guard Headquarters, Major General Hugh B. Moat. Um, Hugh, Major General Hugh B. Moat Tennessee National Guard Headquarters, and you know, whatever the address is, um, Sitco Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, and so on and so on. Um, contact Sergeant Cox, okay, his phone number, right? Cargo of uh, air compressor on single ISO trailer, okay, reference. 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's your pickup time. In the time between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. That is your window of pickup time. Okay? Notes. Again, you have another note down there. Driver must bring release paperwork and must call ahead so he can escort you onto property. So you can't just show up at a military base and say, hey, I'm going to pick up a load. <laughs> he can't do that. They're, they're telling you, you got to call ahead. You got to call ahead. Also, the driver must collect what? Payment code from delivery contact person before offloading. So you got to call ahead, right? So they can have an escort there to escort you onto the property. Because this is a military base, and all military bases are guarded and protected. Okay, you're not just going to roll up on the military base and just cruise right in. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So you got to call ahead so they can arrange to have an escort to meet you there at the front gate to escort you into the military base. Okay? Deliveries. Date for delivery is 1-12. That's two days later. 18, 2018. Location, Pine Ridge School Facilities. 101 Thorpe School, Pine Ridge, whatever this is. Contact Daniel Nelson. Phone number. There's his phone number. Office and cell phone number right there. Best to reach, right? Which is that cell phone number. It says best to reach. All right, there's the cargo. Make sure it's the same as that. Make sure it's the same. Check the cargo. Make sure it's exactly the same. Okay. References. Don't have any references. No hours. Eight to four thirty. Monday through Friday, or call for after hours. So your window for delivery is eight a.m. in the morning till four thirty. In the afternoon, Monday through Friday. If it's going to be on a Saturday, it's going to be after hours. You got to call to arrange for delivery on after hours. All right, let's go down here. Got some more stuff down here. Uh, all right, here we go. Pay items. Okay, flat rate sixteen hundred bucks. All right, quick pay ACH at three percent. Payment code, okay? Driver must collect payment code from client before offloading. Then call that and give us the payment code. If payment code is not collected by the driver and repeated back to that shipping and transport, we will be unable to pay your transportation company. Y'all see how important it is to read these instructions? Very important, right? Yes, very important. Very important. That's why I say you read every rate confirmation. Do not just glaze through a rate confirmation because they're all going to be different. They're all going to be different. They all have certain specific things that have to be done in order for this transaction to take place smoothly in order for you to get paid. Okay? So it's very important that you read these rate confirmations. By accepting this load, you are acknowledging these terms and releasing that shipping and transport LLC of any liability if your driver does not collect the payment code. See, there are consequences for not following instructions. And they lay them out for you. But you got to read this stuff. You have to make sure you read this stuff. Check the rate amount. Make sure it's, again, make sure it's right. Then you come down here, you got the rest of this stuff as it's I'm going to say BOLs must have delivery name printed and signed to get paid. That is in bold letters, people. Bill of Ladies must have delivery name printed 
and sign to get paid. Driver must check VIN serial numbers when supplied. Okay, if they're not supplied, don't worry about it. If they're supplied, you got to check them. Driver or dispatcher, listen up, people. Driver or dispatcher must call ahead with ETA, estimated time of arrival, so they can get ready for the driver at both the pickup and delivery location. Now, if you don't read these rate confirmations and you don't do these things, what's going to happen? It's going to cause problems. They're not going to be ready for you to receive you, which means your driver is going to be sitting outside trying to get loaded, and he could miss his load date, and that's going to push everything back, which pushes everybody money back or cause everybody not to get paid at all. Right? This is, this is your responsibility to read this stuff. Because I'm telling you, if you just shoot this over to the carrier, nine times out of ten, the carrier is not going to read it. <laughs> they're gonna look at the money. Oh, the money looks right. Oh, where it's going to? Okay, yeah, they're gonna sign and send it back. Nine times out of ten, that driver, that carrier is not gonna read this stuff. It is your responsibility as a dispatcher to read this stuff and convey this to the driver and the carrier. So, therefore, if you are reading it and you're reading it to them and you're conveying it to them and you're getting their knowledge, but you know that they understand it. Okay, that is your job. Okay. Um, Drivers must be made, and here's the here again. This is in bold, big, all capital letters. Driver must be made aware of and follow all the instructions on the low confirmation. That's what I just got to tell you all. <laughs> okay, this is highly important. And that's what I just got to tell you all. Reading these instructions is so important and it's so vital because it goes directly to if you're going to get paid or not. Again, in big, bold capital letters. Driver must be made aware of and follow all instructions on this load confirmation, i.e., collect payment at delivery, call with payment code, call record service ETC, etc. They're going over the same stuff that they've gone over here. They're, they're, they're reiterating it down there again. That's how important it is. Okay. If there is if there are any problems at loading or delivery. Length, weight, item is not running, need permits, etc. Driver is to call that shipping and transport LLC before doing anything further. If driver transport an item with a problem and does not have that shipping and transport LLC approval, no future arrangements of additional payments will be given. Whoa. That's a big consequence. That could affect you even running loads with them in the future. Y'all see how important it is to follow these instructions and to read this stuff now? I know a lot of people think, oh, this is the easy part right here. Raycon, I don't book the load. I don't find the load. You know, this is that. Now I just got to get the Raycon, get it signed, get it over, this is and we get paid. Uh, nah, this is, this is not the easy stuff. This is the most important stuff. So don't get complacent when you get to the rate cut. Just because you done find a load, getting good paid money, all this other stuff, this, this deal is far from being done if you cannot complete this transaction and follow these exact instructions. Okay, this is where the rubber meets the, mo meets the road, as they say. Okay, very, 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 very important and vital stuff. Okay, um, without the approval, no future arrangements of additional payments will be given. If there are any problems in route, driver is to immediately call that shipping and transport LLC. We understand delays, but need to know the exact conditions. Now, Darren will tell you, and I do all the time too, I stay in constant contact with my drivers. If I'm dispatching the load personally, I stay in contact with the driver. If the driver, you no know, drivers always can call me up or call Darren up. Say, hey man, I got a problem. That's why you that's why when y'all be seeing Darren, when he pops in on the meeting, he be popping in out. Darren is always dealing with something either with the loads, with the brokers, with the carrier, something that's the note, that is the sign of a successful dispatcher. If you are always busy, you are making money. 
I promise you that. And Darren is always busy with doing something when it comes to low confirmations, um, talking with the carriers, dealing with shippers and brokers. You know, all there's a million things that can come up, but that's the life of a dispatcher. You know, is that you're not doing this twenty four seven, but in the hours that you're working, you are busy. You are busy. That's why y'all call me up in the, in the morning time. Sometimes I tell y'all I try to be quick because I because I got about five or six people on the line. <laughs> you know, you know, on hold. I got about three or four missed phone calls, and I just got off a call, and I've got to make phone calls as soon as I get off, as soon as I get off the phone with you. Okay, if you are busy, you are making money. You are successful. Okay, where we are here. Uh, if there are any, okay, um, they didn't know the exact um, um, condition. We utilize low tracking technology. The driver must agree to accept text messages that will update our system. Be certain to provide driver name and cell phone number below. Okay, that's where you get the driver's name, cell phone number, print name, and all that stuff goes right there. Okay, uh, that's a the low confirmation, let me see if I can find their, their rate con. No, 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 no. Hold on. Let me find their rate confirmation. Now that's a low. All right. Here's the bill of lading. Here's the bill of lading. Now. For the same load. This is the bill of lading from the same load. This is what you get from the receiving um, consignee, the receiving shipper, where you drop the load off. All right? This is what you're going to get uh, from them. It's going to be tied up, bill of lading. You're going to have your load number there. Some people will have pro number or load number. Remember, it's the same thing. You're going to have the date. You have the weight. Just to make sure it all checks out. It's the same as the one that's on the rate con. Same information here. The drop-off. Delivery, um, um, location, primary school facility, address, phone number, cell number, primary contact, Daniel Nelson, phone number, cell number, best to reach at cell number, um, notes and references. No, again, important, three stars on either side. Driver must collect payment code from delivery contact person before offloading. Now, this is about the fifth time that you've seen that, so you know that is vital, right? Ain't no excuse. There's no excuse for the driver not getting the payment code because they don't put this thing on here about five, six times already. <laughs> okay? They really mean that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, so make sure that you follow these instructions. Uh, again, references. What type of um, equipment or, what's, or what, the, um, what the shipment is. Make sure it's the same, same item number, same type of air compression, okay? Pickups, there it is right there, the pickup location, where it got picked up from, Sergeant Cox, all that stuff is the same as it was on the Raycon. Deliveries, here it is again right here. Make sure you go over, should pick up the time, the location, the contact information, us. The hours of the drop, 8 a.m. to 4.30 um, p.m., Monday through Friday, or call for after hours. Important. The above described, important. The above described property is received in apparent good order. Count and conditions verified except as noted below. Okay. Make sure that they do this. Make sure they print their name, signature, date. Driver, carriers, you're going to print their name, signature, and date. Receive a consignee, the person who is signing for it being received. Name, signature, and date. Okay? So those are some really good sample, uh, what you call it right there? Bill of Ladens and what you call it? Any questions on Bill of Ladens and Raycons? Any questions on that? Yeah, I got a quick question. Yes, sir. Um, will they be emailing this 
rate kind back to you, like the carrier, or is it actually a piece of paper that they got to sign? No, it can be it can be email or it, it can be e signed, but it's got to be a piece of paper that they sign. And if they and if they is a piece of paper, blah, 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 blah. when you get the actual sign comes back, it can be a photocopy. As long as they got like the tablet oh, or the phone, they can sign it right, and then they pull it up over it and make sure you got a good clear copy of everything that's on there. And you can send that with it. These are the, the email copies, right? Because okay. you see they're not signed. But the actual ones that I receive are the ones that when they ship me a, a a photocopy of it after it's been signed and everything. They 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 get a good clear picture of the whole document. Okay, so it's the, uh, the the carrier is uh, taking that picture, right? Exactly. Okay, carrier is taking that picture and they're sending it to you. And so you're gonna send this copy and that photocopy over to your broker. Because they got it printed out so they can see it nicely and they got the sign copy. Okay. Most, most, most truck drivers have tablets. That's why they have tablets. Because they can take a good picture of the whole thing. They can send it right to you or they can take it with their phone. They can just message it to you, text it to you, or whatever the case may be. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Any other questions on rate cons? You're welcome. You're welcome. Good question, by the way. Any other questions on rate cons and bill of ladies? All right. Does everybody see the importance of rate cons, of reading rate cons and bill of ladies? Does everybody have a different? Does every? Does, does everyone now have a? Well, Mr. Bell, I have a question. Yes, sir. I don't know the uh, the paperwork that you just explained. Where do I get those from? What do you mean the rate cards and stuff? That's gonna come from the, the broker. Cons. Come from the broker, okay? Yeah, that's what sure. you gotta get from the broker. Yeah, after you after you go to the load board, you find a load, you call the broker up, y'all discuss you know, this load, what it's paying, this is that. Then the broker is gonna pretty much gonna um, ask you. For, for your carrier's DOT or MC number. They're going to run your carrier to make sure that they're good to run that load. Once they that checks out, this all takes about 15, 20 seconds. It doesn't take long at all. And they're going to run it. And they go, okay, that carrier is good to go. I'm going to go ahead and shoot you over Raycon. That's what they're going to send you. They're going to send you the Raycon. Okay? You're going to get the BOL from the place you drop it off to. So you got to get the Raycon information. It's coming from the broker. Right, they're gonna send you the rate card. Make sure you read it, all that stuff. Go, call your carrier, read all that. Blah, 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 blah. Then when they drop the load, they're gonna get that paperwork from the place where they drop the load at. All right, make sure both the page that you picked it up from signs it, prints it, like I said. Make sure the place you drop it off to, where they give you the BOL, which is your receipt. Make sure they print, sign it, you know everything the way it's supposed to. Okay. This is not okay. something that you. This is not something that you, as a district, you all don't have to have, you know, printed out forms or rate cards. No, 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 no. This all comes from the broker. This comes from the broker. Even if you're doing a direct shipper load, it's going to come from the shipper. So whoever you're picking that, whoever you're getting that load from, is going to supply you with the rate card, and whoever you're dropping that load off to is going to supply you with the BOL. I got another question. Yes, sir. Uh, is it two different BOLs or do they have to kind of like sign the same one? No, there's only right. one BOL. There, there's a rate card and then there's a BOL. The rate confirmation is the, what you get before you go pick the load up. That gives you all your instructions, have to pay on it, everything outlined the way you discussed it. The BOL is your receipt you pick up from the place you deliver to. So you're going to have a signature from the People who you picked up from, they're gonna sign, and then you're gonna get a signature from the BOL for the people you deliver to. They're gonna print it out and sign. And both of those have to be sent back over to the broker once this whole thing is completed. Okay. Okay, once the load is delivered, everything got the receipt, then the carrier is gonna send you both back the rate con. And the you know the sign you know great confirmation where they picked up the load and the sign receipt from where they dropped the load up they're gonna send you both those back. Okay, thank you. And then you forward those 
over to the broker. That's confirmation that everything was done the way it was supposed to, and that's how, how they then go ahead and, and, and authorize your payment for the carrier to get paid. Thank you. No problem. Any other question? Okay. I got one Hopefully you up. all have a have a um yes sir. Uh earlier in um earlier in the class you stated the steps of what you have to do. Um like do the pitch, do like can you um give me them steps again? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do better than that. I'm gonna do better than that. If you're in your back office, they're in your back office too, by the way. Okay. But I'm gonna do better than that. You can either go to your back office site, which is uh -huh. right here. Let's go to your back office. In your back office, here they are right here. How to dispatch series. This, this is the entire series right here. And they're all they're here in order. Okay? The first step is compliance. Knowing you know, what dispatches are, why they are legal, you know, what type of equipment you're going to need, all that type of stuff. The next step is what? Locating carriers. We go over and show you where to go find your carriers at and how to locate them and, 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 and how to get your list of carriers uh, of owner operators to, uh, to call. Once you know that, then you got to go be what? Your pitch, right? The pitch, you know, how much you, know, you need to move your truck. Then step, and the next step is going to be what? Dispatch training, dispatch agreement, right? That's the dispatch agreement. And after that, it's going to be, once you get the, uh, once you get the agreement side, then you got to go to load boards and find load. That's load acquisition. Then you're going to go to what we are on right now. Once you find the load, you're going to go to Rate confirmations and BOL and getting paid. Those are your steps right there. If you if you're in your back office, if you have access to your back office, you have all seven videos right there. Or you can go to our playlist on our YouTube channel, and you can. I have a whole bunch of different. I'm playlist here. Those of you who want to know about Calm Dana and EFS, we have two videos on that. Uh, we have the easy lease. Don't worry about that. We have um, how to identify and create um, your own high-paying um, dedicated lanes. We have seven videos on that. We have videos for brokers. We have 13 videos for the broker's hour on the broker um, 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 process. I did, you know, uh, the low board report. And I'm sorry, we got a series called Dispatching from the Park Series. This is, I was just doing some reminiscing and going back to the parks that I used to go to when I was homeless and doing this starting from the homeless shelter. <laughs> I was I was take I, I was giving everybody a tour of the different parks uh, that I used to walk to or get the bus to during my day. Um uh, because I leave the homeless shelter like at 4 30 in the morning and I go to these parks and, and get on Wi-Fi and dispatch freight. <laughs> so so like, you know if I can do this being homeless, I know good dog on well y'all can do this. <laughs> okay. Um you got another series, the, the low board report. We got 19 videos on the low board report. My private consultation. And finally, the how-to dispatch series. This is the how-to dispatch series. I'm going to go ahead and, and give you a link to this. Share this link right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, send it out to my YouTube people. So you all can have it on YouTube. And I'm going to send it to you all on here. Uh, where's my thing at here? Send it to you all in the chat. I'm sending this um, to everyone. Here's the link to the How-To Dispatch Series. All right. Does everyone want to get that link to the How-To Dispatch Series on YouTube? It's in the chat. Everybody should have it. Everybody got it? Everybody see it? Yeah, I got it. All right. All right. Um, but yeah, um, that's where you find everything. Most of the stuff that you all are looking for is going to be in your back office. All this, the entire series is in the back office. It's also on our YouTube channel. Now, once Darren starts doing his 
training and stuff, you all are going to have going to be able to access his training too um, from the back office. So we're going to have a link to his training and his schedule and stuff there as we're going to have to all the people who get their own RBBS Logistics Learning Centers. You're going to have a link. To, if, if they decide to do their own training, you're going to have links to their training too as well because we are really on a mission to create a huge legacy with the RBBS Logistics Learning Center. We are really trying to make this the number one, the go-to the most diverse logistics training on the internet. Now, I don't, I don't know too many. Um, I, I don't know any other dispatch training platforms that have a setup where you have multiple, where you are now going to have multiple trainers, multiple um, 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 mentors, multiple you know people who are going to be able to help you in training in different aspects of dispatching trucking, brokering, and all this other stuff. Whether you're going to have multiple YouTube channels, multiple training sessions you can go to, you know, attend on nightly trainings, and this is that, because on Thursday night, I'll see have my thing on Thursday night. Darren may have his on a Friday night. I don't know. Whenever his is, you all will have access to his as well as some of the other people who have, who have already told me that they're going to go ahead and get their um, their own RBBS Logistics Learning Centers through our trade market. Okay? So we are expanding this. And uh, so you all will have a lot more people to to learn from than just me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> which is a good thing. Which is a good thing, right? Because now you're going to get to see different, you know, our personalities, different ways of people training. You know, some people you may be, I mean, you may feel more comfortable with different people. So, you're going to have those things now, and, 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 and you can schedule private consultation with different people and things like that. Darren is, is, is the man when it comes to auto hauling, so, and, and, and he, he knows as much about dispatching as I do and about the freight broken process as I do. But I'm going to tell you right now, he knows more about the auto hauling than I do. Okay? I taught him the auto hauling, but he has taken it to a whole new level. And I don't mind saying that. I give props where props is due. Okay? So, um, That's what y'all can look forward to. And those of you who are wanting to, you know, you know, make money like I do and like Darren is going to be and, and some other people, you know, take a look at our um, trademark um, opportunity. Uh, we have two entry-level uh, trademark uh, positions at $1,500 and $2,500. And then we have the upper-level ones at $5,000 and $10,000. Okay? So, but any more questions on what we went over here tonight? Okay. Did y'all learn something? Yes, I did. Always. That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. I wanted y'all to learn the importance of these Raycons and BOLs because they're not just some, you know, piece of paperwork you do. These are very important. These are very important. The, by following these instructions and knowing how to evaluate and read these rate cons and BOLs, it will save you a lot of problems and make your getting paid. It makes your getting paid a smooth process. Because if you don't follow these instructions, I can guarantee you're going to catch hell on getting paid if you get paid at all. All right. All right. That kind of concludes the training segment. I want to go over some stuff uh, real quickly and show you all what we were talking about with the, um, um, with the, um, the trademark stuff that we do. Let me go ahead and start sharing my screen again. Where's my share? My share, my share, my share, my share, my share. Share my screen again. And I'm going to take you all over here to our, okay, on both our our main uh, vocational school website and on our dispatch back office site, we've made some changes to the homepage. As you notice here, when you all go to mydispatcher.org now, it kind of gives you a little, you know, a rundown of what we offer, okay? Uh, training and the convenience of your home. By the way, these are sites that you get if you are, if you get your own trademark. You're going to get the same sites. You're going to have your, but, but I'm not going to be the owner of it because I'm going to be able to duplicate these sites. I can go to my Wix and I can hit duplicate site and then 
I'm going to transfer the ownership of that duplicate site to you, the person who um, um, the trademark usage um, agreement owner. So once you do your trademark usage um, um, agreement, you get your own RBBS Logistics Learning Center site, our back office site, you get this exact same site, but it's going to have a link to, when you go over here to where it says uh, private consultations, it'll have the private consultation page where you all can, but if you all want to do your own, you know, if you want to be listed and do private consultation like, like Darren does, it'll have a link here and we will add you to the private consultants page. So when people click on here and they want to do private consultation, they get to go over and then um, come on over here and then they can add you to the private consultants page, which is a pop up here shortly. Here we go. And you can, and then you'll be listed in the, um, under the staff of the private consultation right here where it says staff, click right there. You got myself, you got Darren Stevens, Kwame Smith, Larissa Pompey. So you can book your private consultation with whoever you want to book it with, or the, or your people can book private consultation. That, you know, if, if if you decide you want to do them, and you got your own RBBS Business Learning Center, you'll be listed down here um, as having you know being able to do private consultation. And, and of course, we charge a hundred dollars per hour, so you'll be able to keep that hundred dollars per hour. And then you all depending on what you are, what depending on what level you come in as as a as a uh, trademark um, owner. It would appear on what you pay me a royalty for at the end of the month. Okay? Because remember, all the money you earn from your RBBS logistics learning center goes into your account. All of it. And then you pay me at the end of the month my royalty. Because I'm still doing the main training and stuff like that, but I don't get paid until the end of the month. So so essentially, I become your, I, I'm an employee of my own company. Okay? You're running your own RBBS Logistics Learning Center, you have your own back office website. Okay, you're going to have this, your own um, um, back office website. You're going to have your own, you know, your curriculum of, of training. Training. You're going to have the main training, which is, is what I do. And then if you all are coming on here, we have you all listening on here on your training schedules too. Like you see this schedule here, this is my screen of schedule. Down here, beneath it, I have each person listed with their own training schedule. So people can click on your link, your Zoom link, go to your Zoom training, or go to your YouTube channel, watch your YouTube videos and things and things of that nature. And so they have the times and the schedule of everybody who is doing training. If you decide you want to train, if you don't want to do training, that's fine. Let us who decide that want to do training, let us do the training. And we can I'll continue to training. Darren's gonna do training. I got some other people who say that 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 they're gonna do training too. All right. Um, you're also gonna have, you know, your the same dispatch tools and resources, but they you know, but they're still gonna be able to, 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 to access all the back office tools and resources. You're gonna have the same tools and resources. Only difference is up here on these YouTube channels, when you have your own version of training. There'll be another listing here for your own version of the YouTube uh, training videos. But the tools and resources are all going to be the same across every RBBS Logistics Learning Center. Okay? Um, low board, uh, max access, all that stuff is going to be the same across every RBBS Logistics Learning Center. Okay? Um, another thing that you all are going to have access to is the different websites. Uh, you're going to have this website. You're also going to get access to this website, which is our um, um, uh, our um, vocational school, um, the RBBS Logistics Learning Centers, our vocational school, our on-site training, and our um, online at-home training. Okay, so you're going to have access to to this website. Not not just access, you're going to get this website along with the back office website. So you're going to have this is going to be your website. It's going to have the links to, when people click on here to, to register, we're going to create another registration page that they go to so that when people register, they are registered under your website and not registered under my website because your website is going to have your links in it. It's going to have the same registration page. The only difference is this registration number is going to be different. 
It's going to be coincide with your site. So we'll know when someone registers for the vocational school and they fill out this information out right here and it comes over to us as a registration form, we're going to know which website it came from, which RBBS Logistics Learning Center it came from. That's going to be your student. You're the one who registered that student to the vocational school. So when they pay their $7,500 tuition fee, if and when we finally get approved for the vote rehab, they go through vote rehab or whatever case may be, when that comes in and gets paid, the registration is coming from your website. So, so, so guess what? The profits from that student goes to you. If you register 27 students, 27 students paying what? $7,500 each. We have, we, can, we have the capability um, to, to run six classes per month. Let me go ahead and pull up the, the calculator real quick. We have the capability of running six classes per month. And if you're registered 27, each class can hold up to 45 students. So if you're registered, let's say, 27 students that month for whatever classes they attend, right, and they're all paying, what, $7,500 each? That's going to equal uh, that much money. And then you got the cost. The cost for each student which the hotel expenses travel and the cost breaks down to this 7,500 minus 4688 is what our profit is. So the cost per student is $2,812. That's the cost per student, right? So if you got that cost times 27 students, if you refer to 27 students, your cost would be 75200 and twenty-four dollars minus what seventy-five hundred times um, twenty-seven, which is going to give you your profit minus two hundred two thousand five hundred. So seventy-five nine two four two hundred and two thousand five hundred minus seventy-five five two. That would give you a total profit of $126,976. And that's just for, you know, 27 students. If you send 27 students that month, that's your cut. Now, depending on what trademark you signed up at, it's going gonna, it's gonna to determine how much, what, what, what percentage of royalty so you're going to pay back to the RBBS and just it at the end of the month. Because remember, all the money goes to you, goes into your square account, goes into your bank account. And then at, at, on the last calendar day of, of each month, you send me my royalty check along with an outline of how many students, because all that stuff would be in your square account that tells you the breakdown of who, of how many uh, online enrollments you have, how many monthly subscriptions. I were paid that month. How many students got registered and paid that, that $7,500 or whatever it to be. So all that you, you'll be able to pull up in your Square account, which we're going to show you how to set that up too. So you'll be able to put all that. So each month, you're going to send me a breakdown. I can pull it up too, pull up the breakdown of what your RBBS Logistics Learning Center did, and then you're going to send me a check for whatever uh, my royalty is. If you sign up at the $10,000 level, you're going to send me a 5% royalty check. If you sign up at the five thousand dollar level, you're gonna send me a 10% royalty check. If you sign up at the twenty five hundred dollar level, you're gonna send me a twenty percent royalty check. If you sign up at the uh fifteen hundred dollar level, you're gonna send me a forty percent royalty check. Plain and simple. Okay. So in other words, you all get all the money that you pay me at the end of the month. That's how the trademark works. I am no longer the quote unquote at the top of the chain on the corporate scale. Yes, I own a company, but I am essentially becoming an employee of my own company. And you all control all of the money. You control the money, you control the enrollments, you control you know, the billings, you control the invoicing, you control, you control everything except for the training. I still do the training, but you control the business aspect of your RBBS and logistics and other centers. Does, does everybody understand how that works now? And by the way, if you're doing that, consistently each month just on the vocational school you do that times 52 weeks um i'm sorry not 52 weeks um times 12 months what was that 126 9 
that times 12 months. That's kind of money you're looking at. So you all see the potential of just a vocational school by itself. Vocational schools are a huge moneymaker. Don't let nobody fool you. If you look at all these truck driving schools and how many truckers they turn out each year. We, I can do a Google um, inquiry um, how many new um, CDL Per year. All right. Uh, is there a, a shortage of truck drivers? How many CDL truck drivers are there in the U.S.? All right. There are approximately 3.6 million professional truck drivers in the United States. <laughs> Did y'all know that? How many truck drivers are there in the U.S.? I'm trying to figure out uh, what's the average uh, the state have. Uh, uh, I, I want to pull up how many new truck drivers, uh, how many CDL drivers. You gotta, you gotta learn to ask the right questions when going to Google. Number of new CDL drivers per year. It's always hard to get the right to answer the exact question if you just got to know what they ask for. How many CDL drivers are there? No, I don't, I'm not looking for that. How many truck drivers? I'm not looking for that. <laughs> it's amazing how Google don't want to give you what you ask for, right? Truck driver salary. I didn't ask you for that. 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 Or the, I didn't ask you for that. All right, truck driver statistics 2021, labor statistics drivers, average truck driver pay, commercial truck driver salary. I didn't ask you for all that. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to rephrase the question again. Um, number of new CDL drivers per year. Um, uh, graduates. Nah, let's see if it gives me an answer there. It's always giving this heavy and tractor trailer truck drivers. Okay. All right, let's put it this way. How many new truck drivers are there every year? Employment of heavy and tractor trailer truck drivers is projected to grow 6% from 2020 to 20 patients, about 231,100 openings for heavy tractor operators, um, truck drivers are projected each year on average over the decade. And it kind of gives you a roundabout answer, but it's still not telling you, you know, what the number of graduates are. Let's put it this way. A ten truck driving schools. <laughs> now, let me ask that question. Truck driving school data. Okay. It's amazing how, how many new truck drivers are there per year. How, what percentage of people are truck drivers? Is truck driving school worth in 2020? How much? Does, uh, okay. Uh, U.S. truck driving.
They want to give me this stuff for Florida. I, I want to know what it is, you know, na nationwide. Let's go up here and check this right here. Let's check the data. Okay, data USA. Air comparison. Uh, is this just for this company? U.S. Truck Driving Training School Competition. 2020 enrolled students, 172, 100% full time. Um, I think this is just for this one company. For one truck, this is just this truck driving school. Let me make sure that's what this is right here. Cost, financial aid, enrollment. U.S. Truck Driver Training School has a total enrollment of 172 students. Yeah, this is just for this one U.S. Truck Driver Training School. Ugh. All right, so it's 172 enrolled students for this truck driving school. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, 1% of students enrolled in the U.S. truck driving school training. We've already enrolled full time. Uh, in the breakdown. I don't want to know what it is for just that one school. I want to know what it is total. Maybe I have to ask a different question then. Let's ask this question. How many CDL how many CDL schools how many CDL schools in the United States. Let me let me ask that question. All right. There are 338 truck driving school businesses in the US as of 2022. A decline of about 0.2%. Okay. All right. So I guess we're gonna have to figure this out on our own. So there are 338 truck driving schools. Um, I know for a fact the one in 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 uh, Orange Park, Florida, Tallahassee, the Tallahassee area sent 60 students to that school, and they run three classes simultaneously. There are three different, you know, for the um, um, a national truck driving school in Orange Park, Florida. So they run three classes simultaneously, and there's about, oh, shoot. I know, I know Tallahassee and VA, the VA sent 60 students by itself. So that was 60 students that went to a four week, uh, four weeks of training from the VA. And I think they had about, a, about 170, 180 students, almost the same as what this other school was. So if you've got, on average, 338 schools, let's do the math. You got on average 338 schools times around, let's say, let's say 150. Well, let's say 100. We're not going to say every school has, you know, 172. We're going to say times 100 students. Oh, not too many. Times 100 students per month because it's a four-week course. Let's just cut it down to just a four-week course. Let's say it's just 100 students all together. And I know that's I, and I know that's a terrible undercutting of the actual numbers, but we're going to go with that. That means there's 33,800 people that attend truck driving school every, every um, month, <laughs> basically. Do y'all see what I'm talking about? Do y'all see what I'm talking about? Talking about when I uh, when it comes to vocational schools make a lot of money because I know the one in Orange Park, Florida, it costs sixty five hundred dollars to attend that school. Let's say on average it's five thousand dollars. Okay, on average it's five thousand dollars. That times five thousand dollars because that's what the average cost is for a truck driving school. That's one hundred sixty nine thousand dollars. No, one hundred sixty nine million dollars. Right, 
$169 million per month. Do you think, do you think that all these truck drivers that are going to school, going to CDL school, do you think all of them can afford to pay that tuition on their own? Out of all these people who attend these truck driving schools, do you think they can afford to pay that on their own? That five thousand to seven thousand dollars on their own. Anybody? I would say no for the most part. For the unless they have a section or something. Actually, I would say <laughs> unless they have a what? Unless they have a savings, a special savings account, I would say no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say that ninety percent of those people are, 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 are not paying their own way. They're sitting there through some type of government program, yeah. either through the VA, through food stamps, through um, Workforce Plus, Job Source One, unemployment, the federal prison system. Uh, you know, oh, housing. There are a whole number of programs that pay to send people to truck driving school, CNA school, um, Hasbat school, um, welding school, all these schools, people are being sponsored through these schools, through these government programs, why to get them off of government assistance. So now you all see why I say vocational schools is the money maker in the United States. People are sleeping on what vocational schools make <laughs> on the on the kind of money that, that they make, and ninety percent of all the students that attend their school are paid for by government programs, taxpayer money, taxpayer money. So if you so if you set up your a vocational school, and I was set up pretty nicely, if I do say so myself. If you set up a vocational school with the curriculum that, that we have, with our executive summary, the way our business model is put together for our vocational school. So once we get this, if we if we get this accreditation and get this VA and and and, and workforce plus and, and and these other government programs start to come on board, I mean there's no stopping us. Ain't no stopping us. I mean, that's just, that's the easiest money you ever want to make. And our vocation has guaranteed career placement with the way we're set up. Teaching this curriculum are bonded, federally bonded owners of freight brokerage firms and owners of state licensed dispatch firms. That's all we've those are the instructors. If you're not, if you don't, if you don't have your own freight, if you don't own your own freight brokers firm, if you're not a bonded, federally bonded freight broker, you cannot be an instructor at our school. If you're not an owner of a state licensed dispatch firm, you cannot be an instructor at our school. Okay. Those are all the instructors that we are bringing in. And we pay our instructors $25,000 per two week course. Four instructors. Per, uh, per class. And that is calculated in that in that 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 overhead um, that I showed you all back there on if you send 27 students in, they register at that seventy five hundred dollars and the cost is like two thousand six hundred some odd dollars per student, it gives you a profit of four thousand um six hundred and eighty eight dollars per student. You all are starting to see the potential of owning an RBBS logistics learning centers. Okay. And that's not to mention when we go ahead and we talk about the um, our other training uh, factors, which is our our online training, which I've already proven how valuable that is, because I've been running that for the last three years, so pretty much myself, and earned more than half a million dollars in the last three years just on the online train. Many times I've shown you all my square no. I've shown you all my earnings um, reports, uh, my custom my custom reports.
是。There it is right there. That's what I've done by myself. Do just the dispatch and freight broker online training. That doesn't include the vocational school. That doesn't include the YouTube channel uh, um, revenue. That doesn't include um, 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 the easy lease. That doesn't include the new training platform that we just started, um, how to run a truck for owner operators. This is strictly what you see right there is strictly what I've made in the last three years from just the dispatch training, which you all are attending here tonight, and the freight broker training, what I have on Saturdays. That's just that by itself. On enrollments and monthly subscriptions. Are you all starting to see the potential of owning an RBBS Logistics Learning Center? And and here's the great part about it. You don't have to do any of the hard work anymore. I've done all the hard work. I've created the brand. I've gotten the following. I have a huge following on YouTube. And, you know, we have built-in clientele and people who are coming in. And, and people, I mean, we already established. The brand is already created. That was the hard part, was creating the brand. That was the hard part. And you don't have to do training. All you do is just come right in, get your own RBBS listener, and then you promote. Your RBBS Logistics Learning Center on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, which we're going to show you how to set up all your social media accounts so you can do your free promotions by just posting stuff like I do all the time on my Facebook pages and stuff like that. My Twitter accounts, you know, on my Twitter page. I have, a, you know, the RBBS Logistics Learning Center on Twitter. I have an Instagram page. I have a LinkedIn page. I have a I have several Facebook. I have, woo, I have about 15, 20 Facebook pages. As you all can see, I have a whole bunch of Facebook pages. So, you know, there's a whole lot of, 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 of ways that you can promote this. Not, not to mention YouTube, my YouTube channel. So, but, you know, if, if you're interested in getting your own RBBS Logistics Learning Centers. You can go either to our homepage here at RBBS LLC uh, at the RBBS um, LLC.com. Go down here and you click here where it says, now you can own your very own RBBS Logistics Learning Center and its subsidiaries. Detailed presentation, click here. Okay, matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and click that and give you all the link to it. But here's the detailed presentation. There it is right there. It outlines each aspect of the RBS Logistics Learning Center. Tells you which all the different websites you get. Tells you what each part of the RBS Logistics Learning Center, what the earning potential is. I even gave you a uh, give you a screenshot of what I just showed you, my square earnings on just the dispatch and broker training um, um, platform. It outlines everything for you. Here's your link to all the websites that you're gonna get. It gives you a, a look at the trademark usage license agreement in full. And if you wanna get signed up, click here to get signed up. And you can pick which trademark you wanna go for, 1,500, 2,500, 5,000 or $10,000 trademark. And this outlines and tells you, you know, what each one provides, what percentage you keep for your for your profit, so what you pay me on royalties. Of course, the the, the more skin in the game you have, the higher your percentages are. If you go up to the ten thousand dollar level, you keep ninety five percent. Everything you earn, you just pay me a five percent royalty at the end of each month. Five thousand dollars, you pay me a ten percent royalty on the end of each month. $2,500, you pay me a 20% royalty. $1,500, you pay me a 40% royalty. Easy laid out. All right, but that's it. That's that's pretty much it for the night, y'all. Um, I just wanted to uh, go through that real quick, let y'all know about that opportunity. Here's the link to the um, 
to the um, the presentation in full. If you want to review that, you know, I have the link there. We'll go ahead and give it to my people over here on YouTube. Give them the link to the presentation. If they want to take a look at it, they've got it. Everybody's got it. So and there you have it. I'll be best just not All right, everybody. Look, I appreciate y'all for sticking around and, um, you know, just hanging out with me so far. <laughs> I appreciate it. I thank you all for tuning in for training, uh, like always. And I hope y'all have a great, great, great weekend. I hope y'all learned something tonight. Hope y'all got some good information. Hope, hope, hope a lot of you all who are thinking about getting your own RPBS just learning channel. I hope we help you all to um, to get the information you need so you all can evaluate this opportunity and make a decision on what you want to do. Thank you all again. I appreciate each and every last one of you all. You all have a great night, and I will see you all. Some of you all, I'll see you all on Saturday for the uh, Brokers Hour that we have on Saturday morning, um, 10, 15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If not, I'll see some of y'all on this Tuesday for Easily Training. And we're going to be starting our um, our trademark owner's training here pretty soon because we're I've got a couple of people who are, who, who, who are ready to go ahead and get their own trademark. And uh, as soon as they do that, then we'll go ahead and schedule our trademark owner's training that we're going to have. Now, if you're not a trademark owner, you won't be able to attend the trademark Owners training. We're not gonna we're not gonna broadcast them on YouTube. I may broadcast the 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 first one and maybe one promotional one, but other than that, trademark owners training is gonna be strictly for trademark owners only. So if if, if you're thinking about getting the trademark, you know you'll be able to look at the, the, the couple of broadcasts that we do put on YouTube, just to kind of give you all a feel for what we do um, as trademark owners and the type of training that you all go through. Um, you'll get that, but after that, you know you won't have access to trademark. On this training. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>